I really want to highlight how things have truly turned a corner. Tesla had their third quarter earnings yesterday and it's up 20%. We covered the event live on my channel. I was not there because I had my 10 year anniversary with my gorgeous wife. And it looks like I have to do that more often because obviously when I'm missing, good things happen. And I wanna be clear that this is not any investment or financial advice. I am a Tesla stockholder. I've been a stockholder since 2012. I worked at the company from 2017 to 2021. I do feel very well versed in this area and that's why I wanna make this video about this specific topic, but I don't want anything that I say to be any investment or financial advice. Now, what's interesting about this time period is for the last three years or so, there's been a period of doubt. There's been a period of looking at Tesla and saying their sales have plateaued. They're not really growing anymore. Their profitability is going down. A lot of people argue that, that the reason why that is, it's because of Elon getting political and supporting Trump. In addition to high interest rates and market dynamics, inflation, economies going down across the globe, so on and so forth. But I think the reason why Tesla's up so much today is because that narrative, I think, has broken. Tesla was able to grow sales in the third quarter, posting their best quarter for the year while growing their margins. So they made more money per car while they sold more cars. I think a lot of this is also helped by Tesla Cybertruck, the very famous triangle on wheels. What's very obvious about this vehicle now is that it's not a niche product. A lot of people in the car market were saying this is going to be a niche product. Only the super rich people will buy it, right? They're not going to sell more than maybe a couple thousand per year. Turns out that Tesla is selling somewhere around 2,000 of these per week, and they're on a trajectory to sell somewhere around 125,000 units per year sometime next year with a long-term goal of selling 250,000 units per year. Now this, of course, makes this truck not niche, and it actually makes it the opposite. It's the most popular EV truck in the world already, not even one year into production. In addition to that, it's also profitable already. So it's not just selling more units, they're selling more units with a profit. If you compare this to any other automaker that sells electric vehicles, specifically pickup trucks, there is no company out there that's making them at a profit. Companies like Rivian that make a great, great product, and the R1S and the R1T specifically, they've been able to sell their trucks, but they still haven't been able to make a profit. Tesla sells more of them and they make money. And as they get closer to 125,000 per year or 250,000 per year, they're gonna be able to sell more of these while making even more money on these trucks, which is gonna help that margin. It's gonna help the company make more profit. So you have more trucks being sold in 2025, in addition to new cheaper models being released next year that Tesla has guided towards in the first half of the year. Still, the jury is out on what these actually are. My theory is that it's some form of the cyber cab that they showed on 1010, that it's going to have a steering wheel and pedal. But what's interesting is they're gonna be able to sell more cars next year, somewhere between 20 to 30% of more cars and potentially make more money per car. That's a complete reversal to the things that were being said that was happening with electric vehicles and specifically Tesla. And this is before autonomy. This is before FSD and the self-driving software that Tesla has been working towards for the better part of freaking eight years, however long it's been. In my videos this year, I was very clear about saying that this is gonna have to be the year where Tesla has to either put up or shut up with self-driving technology. Customers have been waiting for years for this thing to actually come to fruition. There's been a lot of overhang. There's been a lot of you know, thinking, is this actually gonna come? What's gonna happen with my cars that have hardware three, that, that old, computer from 2016 onwards that's in the majority of the cars out there is that going to be able to be unsupervised autonomy but in this call all of those were answered on the call yesterday tesla said that they are indeed already testing self-driving ride hailing in the bay area with their employees and they have been doing so for the better part of a year. And they also said that they've been working closely with regulators in California to try and figure out when they can roll this out to the broader public. Now, this reconfirms the guidance from the company that next year in 2025, they will have some sort of ride hailing network in Texas or California or both that's gonna start collecting revenue on self-driving rides. It might have a driver in the front just for safety purposes, but what it points to is that the proof of concept is actually there, it's actually monetizable. They're gonna start making money on this thing. And I think that clue has been there for everyone who has had a Tesla that has the latest software updates for their cars in a lot of regions. The latest version 12 that uses the end-to-end -end neural net, sort of this AI brain, and trying to teach the car how to drive by just using cameras that we've talked about a bunch on this channel. I think it's becoming obvious that Tesla will solve this. And the guidance they gave on the call, again, they've become very, very good at hitting their milestones this year. You know, they say, we're gonna do this on this date, and they do it. And that's very, <laughs> that's a 
huge change from how Tesla usually operates when it comes to self-driving guidance. But next year, they guide it towards being safer than a human by the middle of next year, sometime in the second quarter of 2025. Let's say we even push that out to the end of the year or even 2026. But I think it becomes very obvious why that's such a huge piece of guidance. The whole story behind Tesla being able to have a fleet of driverless cars that can be monetizable, that cost a fraction to build versus competing companies like Waymo and Chinese companies as well, where you can have this dream of a $30,000, $25,000 car cost that can drive itself is actually becoming a reality. And next year, Tesla will be able to put pen to paper. They'll be able to put it on their PL, their profit and loss sheet that says, this is how much we made, right? And I think that's going to be a huge flip for analysts and investors to actually start taking this thing seriously. And perhaps today's move, again, not investment or financial advice, perhaps that is some of the early realization that, hey, this is actually coming. So we got to get ready for it. In addition to that, the guidance around existing vehicles that have hardware three, which is the computer that Tesla has had in their cars since 2016 or so, we got specific guidance that those cars at a maximum will need a hardware upgrade for free for the owners that have purchased hardware three vehicles with full self-driving. And that that is huge because most of the cars they have right now of the 7 million cars driving around, the ones that can actually drive themselves are hardware three cars. So now Tesla has said, hey, if we figure it out on the new computer, but we can't figure it out on the old computer, you don't have to buy a new car. We'll just give you the new computer for free and you'll be able to use your car as an unsupervised robo taxi. That is gigantic. I'm curious to see what that does to the used car prices for Tesla in the coming years. If they can actually solve unsupervised self-driving, that unlocks a gigantic amount of value. What is the fundamental currency of humans that they really, really value the most? It's time, right? It's not dollars. It's not food. Maybe for me it is sometimes, but time, time is the most important. All of us go out of our way to buy more time, to make more time, to do what we want to do. Unsupervised self-driving, unsupervised FSD in Teslas falls in that same exact category where someone's going to be able to pay some form of payment monthly or, or one-time payment all in, let's say 300 bucks a month, where they don't have to actively monitor the car. They can literally turn that feature on, the car drives itself, and you can just do whatever you want in that car. You can sleep, you can eat, you can talk, you can go on your phone, you can, I don't know, use the screen. If you just push this out, let's say for the rest of the decade, it becomes obvious that having unsupervised self-driving on the existing fleet, even without a ride, hail, ride hailing network rather, where you just own your car and it can drive you around, with a steering wheel pedal, you can choose one to take over. People are going to pay for that. People are going to pay to buy back their time. And people that buy back their time usually are the ones with the most amount of money. Okay. The people that can afford to buy back their time are the people that have a lot of money. And I think what's interesting about this value proposition is that now you're going to have a thing that's going to be accessible to a lot of people. If they can actually keep the prices down to around 30,000, whatever it is, 25, 35,000 and offer some sort of monthly service for people to get back their time. Fast forward to the end of the decade, Tesla's probably gonna have around 20 million cars in their fleet, and it's 300 bucks a month. That's roughly $70 billion per year. And at a 30 times multiple on price earnings, which is a fancy word of saying, what is the value of the business, right? Based on common metrics on fast growing companies that sell software, so on and so forth. And 30 is probably conservative, to be honest. But if you apply 30 PE, that's roughly $2 trillion in market valuation just from that recurring revenue on 20 million cars. Obviously, that number gets significantly bigger. If the fleet gets bigger, if the fleet is 50 million, that number is more than double, just two and a half times bigger, right? And then you layer on the bot, and then you layer on the fact that Tesla showed 30% margins on the energy side of the business, which is helping their bottom line profitability. Anyway, this is to say that Tesla has truly turned a corner. If you think back to 2015 through 2019, if you followed Tesla from that time, like I have, if you were an investor or just a fan, that period of time was very interesting because Tesla had just got done going very, very high in the stock market. They proved that they could make profitable vehicles. They had just launched their Model X and they were getting ready to launch their Model 3. And that period of time was doubted a lot by the general public and the stock market because Tesla was starting to transition away from being a niche electric vehicle automaker to a mass market electric vehicle maker. 
But that period of time required a lot of investment into that next leg of growth, that next thing they were building. For the last three years, Tesla has taken a lot of their cash and a lot of their strategic direction to build up that, that foundation, the self-driving hardware, the self-driving software, the ride-hailing app, the human or robot, the trading compute at the headquarters with the NVIDIA H100s and B200s or whatever the hell they're going to be making now, the inference compute, so on and so forth. Those three years have been spent building that out. And while they were doing that, what's shocking is if you if you read the headlines in mainstream media, you'll think that Tesla, you know, Elon's just, you know, on, on X, just shit talking everybody and supporting Trump and destroying the brand, <laughs> right? And so that means that Tesla's probably awful. They're doing awful. The opposite is true. If you look at their balance sheet, how much cash they have, how much cash they've been able to raise, Tesla's been able to add billions of dollars in cash. So they're now at $33 billion of cash. They've kept their debt to near zero. So they have no debt. They have more cash and they've been able to reinvest a lot of the money they've made into their artificial intelligence, their self-driving software, their self-driving hardware, their human or robot, right? And now, and now in 2024, going into 2025, all of these things are going to start paying off is what I'm seeing. But I'd love to hear your take in the comment section below. Let me know where you disagree. Let me know where you agree. And we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.